So it's fair to say, you know, with the pandemic, we saw about two years of digital transformation. And this is what Satya Nadella, our CEO, actually said. We saw two years of digital transformation in two months. And it's fair to say that acceleration is not is not tailing off. So even hopefully we're at the, at the tail end of that piece now and things are going back to normal. The message coming through from our enterprise customers is that they're still charging four guns ahead. The reason it being is that they have to. You know, if you look at the prediction around the tech market, you know, by the end of the decade, um, the tech market is supposed to be worth several trillion dollars. And at the moment, um, it's worth about 5% of the global P GDP. By the end of the decade, it's, it's predicted to be worth 10%. But it's what happens to that additional 90% that's really interesting because every organization now has to be a tech organization. Even if you're a local government, you need to develop technology to support your citizens. And clearly, if you're a tech focused organization, even more so. So the key part of the message that we land with software companies these days is the way that our customers are transforming is changing. The way they're buying software is transforming. We as Microsoft and our partners need to change as part of that as well. And that's where digital marketplaces and go to markets come in to meet this ever accelerating demand for technology. So this is Satya Nadella, um, the great man himself. Every Microsoft person has to have a Satya Nadella slide within their deck. I'm joking, of course, um, but we tend to have this anyway. And Satya spends a lot of time talking to partners, um, software companies, um, because they're so important to us. But also he spends a lot of time talking to our customer base about our software companies we work to uh, as well, because they're such a critical part of our industry narrative. So when we talk to customers, we don't just want to talk about our first party services, you know, Microsoft 365, Azure, all the rest, all the rest of that sort of great stuff. We also want to talk about the, the industry solutions that our partners have as well. And the software companies we work with are a critical part of that. And we think about how we work with software companies. We think about three main things. The first thing we're focused on is customer success, you know, and by customer, we mean enterprise customers, um, and that could be Tesco's, for example, uh, in the UK, that could be, you know, Bank of America. It's those industry customers that we work with, but also a lot of software companies we work with are also customers of Microsoft as well, because they buy and consume our cloud, and we're very thankful for that. So the first thing is, how do we drive success for that group, including the software company themselves? The second bit then is, how do we drive partner success? So rather than treating software companies like customers, how can we treat them like partners? And that's where this go to market program comes in. Can we help amplify their solutions to our customer base to drive their success? And that's a key part of that value proposition we have for software companies. Then lastly, hopefully not a surprise to anybody, anybody on this call, but we're very focused on our own success as well. Clearly, we're a commercial organization. But the basic equation here is that if we can drive customer success and partner success and they use our cloud, then ultimately that's going to make us successful as well. So it's that shared success model, which tends to be uh, very effective. And a key part of our proposition is that we're not just talking about hosting. You know, we're not talking about cloud hosting here. That's a key part of what we do. You know, Microsoft Azure is used by thousands of software companies globally to host solutions and deliver them as a service to customers. But that's just one part of the jigsaw. You know, if we talk about other solutions, you can see in the slide, Microsoft 365, Dynamics, GitHub, um, LinkedIn even, you know, if in terms of that talent piece or business development piece, it's, 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 it's growing massively. But Microsoft 365, for example, is a behemoth in the modern workplace space. It's fair to say millions of users um, use that on a monthly basis. And lots of the software companies we work with have to link into it, you know, because their customer base use Excel, for example, or Word or Outlook. They have to connect into that stuff. And um, so that's a requirement. But increasingly, these software companies are now looking at these install bases of Microsoft 365 and wondering how can we leverage that to help sell more software? And that's where marketplaces comes in. That's where all of that journey that we're going to talk about today is critical. And a real life example of that piece is in the healthcare space. So the NHS is licensed for about 1.1 million users of Microsoft 365, uh, lots of press releases on that. So that I'm not sharing anything commercial in confidence with you today, that would be naughty. But ultimately, so the NHS is licensed for 1.1 million users of Teams, for example, you know, and everyone loves a bit of Teams, particularly during the pandemic, um, and maybe you don't, um, lots of uh, different opinions on that. However, the NHS now strategically use Teams as an application, and we're doing a lot of work um, last year to actually help 
software companies that sell into the NHS integrate and build Teams applications so that an NHS user doesn't have to break out the Teams experience to use the software company's um, solution. The NHS love that and it really helps software companies sell more solutions into the NHS because you're now working with the NHS in a way they want to be worked with and what we're seeing is actually in terms of differentiation and the NHS selecting vendors in some cases based on their ability to do that so again it's this free client strategy that Microsoft has is a key differentiator for us another good example of that is Dynamics um, so that's our business application stack, ERP, CRM, et cetera. That's now built cloud natively in Azure, which means that software companies with their customers permission, obviously can utilize that data and bring that into their own Azure environment and start building those capabilities that their customers are asking for as well. So it's not about hosting. Well, it is about hosting, but it's not just about hosting. Much more to the pie than just that piece. And just on that Teams piece specifically, it's so important to Microsoft that we have a, a team that deals with this. And um, if you want to reach out to me at the end, I can happily hook you up with, with that team. And what they do is work with software companies to help them build Teams applications and also Teams integrations as well. And you can see some of the, um, some of the bits there in terms of joining the ISV program, including financial incentives up to $20,000 to help partners publish a new Teams app. So, you know, if you, you want to learn more about that, reach out to me at the end and I'll hook you up with a team um, that will help you do that. So again, we're not just about Azure, it's that entire Microsoft Cloud piece that we want to work on. So when we work with software companies, we look to do three main things. The first is, you know, with partners like Cloud Direct is ultimately help them build in Microsoft Cloud. That's important to us, right? You know, we, we only do this for companies that use our cloud. Clearly, we don't do that for our competitor, competitors' um, cloud. But ultimately, it's about building that as your solution. The second bit then is how can we then help you take that market, take that solution to market, help you win more customers? And again, that shared success model at the start, if we do that, drive, drives our success, right? And then lastly, how can we help you co sell? with Microsoft as well, via our partners, via our marketplaces, and even via our salespeople in some cases as well. So our marketplace strategy is made up of, of two storefronts, if you like. So it's basically one uh, marketplace, two storefronts. The first is ultimately AppSource, um, which is our business to business persona. Actually, both marketplaces are business to business, but AppSource is business person persona. It's those BAU or business line of business applications, um, typically SaaS, um, that you know a, a CFO might buy, for example. Um, and then we have the Azure marketplace, which is more IT focused. That's IT focused solutions. Both of them are in, in the same marketplaces. Lots of organizations have their software applications in both. But the whole point here is that you publish once through our marketplace and then you can sell through all of these different channels that you see on the screen today. You know, direct, um, which is by the marketplace itself, CSP, which is actually our partner channel. So you can host on our cloud and sell through our partner channel network to their customers. And finally, that field piece is where Microsoft salespeople uh, come in as well. And the reason why we're doing this is that marketplaces and go to market in general is, is much more important. So by the end of the decade, um, the tech industry will, will be worth about 7 trillion approximately. I guess there's a bit of a rounding or error in there, up or down. But the way that customers will buy will also change or will, will be predicted to change. At the moment, you know, resale become less important. So 64% of the market buy through resale at the moment. That's going to drop. But what is going to ma grow massively is the marketplace piece. You know, so a third of all um, sales will go through marketplaces and a third will flow direct. And the Microsoft go to market journey is designed to uh, take advantage of all of these three ways, essentially help software companies sell to their customer base through each of these three um, areas that we're going to talk about today. So Microsoft's marketplace is critical to how we work with software companies. It's ultimately where we want our customers to come and buy partner solutions. So the whole point here is that you um, have an unmatched opportunity to build unique apps and reach our customer community. You can acquire customers once and then upsell to them multiple times through marketplaces or via partners or, 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 or via um, direct even. And then finally, we have the, the largest distribution channel um, from a partner perspective. 
people like Cloud Direct, for example. And that's really important because some of those partners will help you go to market. They have lots of customers that they can help sell to. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. But also you have partners like Cloud Direct who have huge amount of credibility and expertise in our cloud technology. So they can actually help you build the solution as well. So not only can they help you build it, they can also help you go to market as well. So that's really important to us. So from a marketplace perspective, we have 4 million odd monthly users. And remember they're business users, they're not consumers on the street. They're people who work for enterprise organizations and they come to marketplace to buy partner solutions. And we have about 30% or sorry, 30,000 apps and services published in marketplace. And that's important because the richer the store, the more people will come to it to buy solutions, but also the more they'll stick around to, to buy other solutions as well. So the go-to-market journey with Microsoft looks like this. The first is we want to get you transactable in our marketplace. That's the start of the go-to-market journey, essentially. And again, there's 4 million odd monthly active shoppers as part of that. Um, and, and that's a starting point, effectively. It's an enterprise-ready marketplace. So you, we're not just talking about selling widgets here. We're talking about enterprise solutions being bought by enterprise customers. That's the whole point of our marketplace. The second bit then is once you're transactable in the marketplace, it means that our partner channel, about 90 odd thousand CSPs, CSP stands for cloud solution provider, by the way, um, can resell you in their own marketplace as well, if they, if you so wish, completely within your control. And some of those 90 odd thousand partners may be focused in the industries that you want to focus in or you're, you are focused in, or they might be focused in the geographies that you want to focus on. Um, that you want to break into, for example. So that's a key part of the value proposition is you're not just scaling through our marketplace, you're scaling through our customers marketplace, uh, sorry, our partners marketplace as well. The third bit then is once you've done $100,000 worth of sales in marketplace, you can then ultimately become co-sell ready, which is where Microsoft sales teams are incentivized to work with you. So we have 15 odd thousand sellers globally, um, Virtually every Microsoft seller these days is industry focused because again, we wanted them to be digital, digital transformation experts in their given industry. And they're incentivized to work with software companies, to walk software companies into their customers and to help them be successful. Now, that's difficult to do. I don't want to oversell that to you too much um, because some partners get wildly excited by the thought of Microsoft's 15 odd thousand sellers selling their solution for, for them and them never having to pick up the telephone again. It doesn't work that way. Um, our sellers won't sell your solution for you. They're not experts in your solution like you are. Your solution comes with a whole lexicon, a whole you know sales process they won't be aware of, but maybe they know the right people to introduce you to is a key bit and they have a vested interest in your success. So, you know, don't think of that as Microsoft selling your solution for you. It does not work like that, but it's still a powerful program. I've seen it being really successful, um, which is fantastic. So the, the so go to market journey is transact on marketplace, work with our partner channel to amplify that to their customers and ultimately then get to co-sell readiness. And there's something interesting that really happens at the end of that process in terms of helping enterprise customers buy your solution, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Sorry to leave you hanging. Sorry, just to say, and that whole process, um, it, it, this is a corp slide, so this comes from the very top, it's driven about $22 billion worth of revenue since its inception, and I think over 170,000 deals have been shared with partners. I think that was last year alone, that 170,000 deals. Um, so it's a real program that delivers real results. And again, the whole point here is that this is not UK focused. The so marketplace as a program and the partners that sell through marketplace are in 141 different geographies. For example, we support 17 different currencies. We do the tax affairs um, for partners who sell through marketplace in 52 countries. And that's really important because when you sell into a new country, it's very easy to fall foul of that local you know, um, tax regulations. And obviously the, um, the issues if you do that are pretty severe. So, we try and manage that as much as possible for you and just to automate and and uh, make that process as seamless as possible for you. So again, this is not just UK. If you want to, if you've got any global aspirations, then Marketplace is perfect. And the other key thing here is that Marketplace is a strategic focus for us. We're putting huge amounts of investment in terms of making Marketplace uh, easier to use for publishers, you know, to make it easier for you to build a transactable solution, but also lots of investment in terms of driving our customers to marketplace, you know, incentivizing our 
sellers to drive their customers to marketplace as well. So it's growing massively, 71% year on year in terms of active users. And again, that application piece, people who are actually publishing through marketplace um, are also growing. And it's where our biggest customers come to buy partner solutions. So about 99% of our biggest customers, I think we measure that by revenue potentially, um, come to commercial market pace to buy partner solutions. I think 95% of Fortune 500 organizations buy through our marketplace. So marketplaces can have a bit of a mid-market view, you know, in terms of the small guys go there to buy uh, solutions. It's not the case. You know, it's mid-market, it's enterprise, it's the full gamut, essentially. And then ultimately, Microsoft have this massive partner ecosystem, and that's obviously not um, an accident. We do that very deliberately. We've, be, we've been focused on partners for decades. You know, it sounds strange to say that, but we really have been focused on partners for decades. And we want software companies to be able to utilize this ecosystem to sell their solutions better. And there's some real advantages in software companies doing that. So I just see estimate that if software companies sell through that ecosystem or take that ecosystem approach in terms of selling their solution, they tend to have um, grow 50% faster than organizations that don't. And I guess that makes sense, right? You know, if you sell through more channels and you're more successful, you're gonna grow faster. So ultimately, there's a real value proposition in working with our partner ecosystem. For partners, so obviously you get to scale instantly in terms of not just selling through Microsoft or your own channels, you can sell through a partner ecosystem as well. So immediately, hopefully, there's more salespeople, um, there's more eyes on screens buying and selling your solution ultimately. And that will help you reach new markets and maybe break into new geographies. You know, one of the hardest things a software company has to do is to sell into a new market potentially. You know, and that can involve opening a sales office big overhead expense in terms of that piece. You don't know the market, you're not credible. So working with partners in new markets can be really helpful in terms of that, that piece as well. And also that margin flexibility piece um, is critical. So within the marketplace structure, you can actually build margins into the partners to incentivize the seller solution. Clearly, they're not running a charity. They will want to be recompensed. Uh, they will want a margin in terms of what um, in, in terms of what your product is worth and what they sell it to customers at as well. So there's a huge value proposition for software companies in doing that. Conversely, there's a huge value proposition for the CSP partners themselves in terms of having an expanded catalogue, more solutions to sell. So the more solutions they sell, the more profit and revenue they can drive essentially. But also then they can bundle their own services around that. So then maybe there's an imp implementation service that they can help sell your solution with as well but also then they can differentiate they can differentiate in market by having great industry software that they sell as part of an overarching digital transformation solution and it's what our customers are asking for so enterprise customers are asking for end-to-end -end solutions you know they like point solutions they're great but ideally they'd buy a solution that incorporates a range of solutions that covers off the entire digital transformation gamut and working with a partner that has that ability, that has that ecosystem of software companies like you to work with is really powerful. So this is the key part, part about Microsoft, um, uh, Microsoft Marketplace, is if you attended Microsoft Inspire in July, we made a big song and dance about this then, the, the fee effectively is 3%. So when you sell to our marketplace, it's 3%. It used to be 20%, it's now dropped to 3%. The reason being is that we don't want any barriers in place in terms of our best customers coming to buy our best partner solutions, right? So we want software companies to be comfortable selling their solution and 3% hopefully is not too onerous to you. Um, and that's more of a cost covering exercise, I believe. Um, and again, we don't want um, enterprise customers not to come to marketplace because they feel like, you know, prices are inflated there. So this is critical to us. The fact that, you know, it's the lowest in industry fee, as I understand it um, at this time. But again, it's how software companies should be transacting their solutions through um, through our marketplace as part of that. And if you haven't seen those solutions, um, so those sessions in Inspire in July last year, type Inspire Microsoft into the browser of your choice. A whole range of sessions from that piece will come up. You can watch them on demand. There's there's loads of great content in terms of marketplace, selling with partners, co-sell, all that sort of great stuff. Recommend that you um you do that. And just some of the um success stories that we have. 
So these are people who are selling to enterprise customers on marketplace. So Shuka IoT, really interesting organization, um, focused in the IoT, IoT space, funny enough, and they found and sold to a Fortune 50 customer on marketplace. I won't read these actually because we're running out of time a little bit, but ultimately this is all about software companies finding enterprise and selling to enterprise customers on the marketplace piece. And the marketplace is a critical part of our enterprise agreement strategy, if you like, how customers buy Microsoft product themselves. And if you've worked with Microsoft before, you probably know all about an enterprise agreement because enterprise agreements have been around for decades themselves. Customers with enterprise agreements can buy solutions via marketplace and call off against that solution against their enterprise agreement, which makes that budget impeach much easier. Uh, for you as a software company. They can just buy you under their EA, essentially. In some cases, you'll be available via the Azure portal. So when they go into the Azure portal that they provision VMs on, so they can not only can they, can they buy Microsoft first party services, in some cases they'll, they'll be able to buy your solution as well. So again, you're circumventing the purchasing process a little bit at that point, which is which is really good. Private offers is really interesting. So again, we understand that a lot of companies aren't selling widgets, they sell true enterprise solutions. And as a result of that sales process, in a lot of cases, the price per customer will differ as well. So customer A might buy a different price per user than customer B, depending on that negotiation process. And private offer supports that. So you can sell to different prices um, to different customers very easily as well. Standard contract terms. So within Marketplace, we have standard T's and C's that you can use as a software vendor, which is great if you want to, you don't have to. But in a lot of cases where marketplace is a preferred route to market for an enterprise organization, there's massive benefit for a software company in doing that. You know, you don't have to go for the song and dance of, you know, the back and forth legal department trying to get the T's and C's approved. They've got standard T's and C's they've already happy with. As long as you're happy with them, then why not sell to a customer under, under there as well? And this is a really interesting bit. This is the bit I alluded to at the start in terms of once you've been for the go to market process in terms of getting transactable, working with the partners, becoming co-sell ready. Once you're transactable in market and co-sell ready, what that means is that Microsoft customers with Microsoft as your consumption commitments or MAC agreements, as that was immediately abbreviated to by every salesperson in Microsoft. What that means is that these people with these consumption commitment agreements can call down the full value of your software against their commitment that they've made to Microsoft. Now that's, it sounds a bit complicated. It really isn't. But ultimately a Mac agreement is where a Microsoft customer, let's say one of the big banks has come to a Microsoft and says, hey, we think we're gonna use X million dollars worth of Azure over the next two years. Can we have a discount? And we say, yeah, okay, you can have a discount, sign this contract that commits you to that spend. That's now legally binding, um, you're committed to that spend, that means that the customer has pre-committed budget now over the next two or three years, and they're looking to use that to buy Microsoft products essentially, but they can also use that to buy partner or software solution products as well, if a customer is transactable in the marketplace and also co-sell ready, which is really powerful because purchasing departments within your enterprise customers love that. It really accelerates that whole process in terms of, they love your solution, they now need to find money to buy it, they've got pre-committed spend at this point that they can use to buy that solution as well. So it's great for software companies because it accelerates that sales cycle typically, you know, in terms of buying through marketplace, if they like marketplace, you're on your, you, no problem getting on your, on your pre-vendor list at that point. And ultimately enterprise customers love it because they get down to burn this big commit spend that they made to Microsoft. And Microsoft salespeople love it as well because the next time they go and negotiate a commit agreement with a customer, it tends to be bigger because not only then are they buying Azure, um, consumption via the commitment, they're also buying software company, um, third party software companies as well. So it's very powerful. Um, I'll just get through that quickly based on time. But ultimately we have um, lots of ways that we work with partners on marketplace. You can list, you can trial, you can bring your own license. The bit that starts the go to market journey that I've just talked through with Microsoft is ultimately the transact piece. That's a bit we're super focused on. That's a bit that drives that whole go to market co sell journey that I've talked through. Um, the basic um, agenda here is that the more you sell through marketplace, the more love you get. Like most things in life, the more you put in, the more you get out. But ultimately, um, as an example of that, when you when you sell your solution or transact your solution on marketplace, just when you get it transactable, for example, there's lots of stuff that that happens. Um, you can do a press release with a Microsoft quote, for example. You get an optimization service to make sure that the, the 
the solution sings and dances on the marketplace and that you stand out, which is cool. The more you sell, the more you get essentially. So at the top end, when you sold lots and lots through marketplace, you can get an individual guest blog, for example, that Microsoft publish on you. You get like a, what else you get? Microsoft executive event endorsement, for example. Um, you get um, some very specific marketing done by Microsoft on your behalf, which is really powerful. On the sales point then, again, um, at the bottom end, you get a certain amount around like the Azure portal solution promotion. So again, your product will be listed in the Azure portal itself. We'll look to promote you via that. At the other end of the spectrum, you then basically would, would jump in on webinars and, and drive in direct engagement with our sales teams to make sure they're aware of your solution and, um, and what it can do. The last thing I'm going to talk about here, so that sort of ends the go to market piece. Um, but the last thing I'm going to talk about very quickly is we just launched an ISV success program. We've been asking for this for uh, decades. Um, so we're very happy with this. So this is for software companies now who can basically think of it as an ISV competency. It's only available in certain regions and you can see there. So if you're UK based, um, um, great, then you qualify for this. So B2B software companies with the intent to publish in marketplace. Um, and one of the only considerations you have is that you have to join Microsoft Partner Network. Very easy to do. If you haven't joined it, recommend that you do already because there's lots of great resources there for you free of charge to join. Effectively, it's for people who are looking to build in Azure, net new applications or driving integrations into existing products or refactoring existing products. And again, great partners like Cloud Direct will help you on this as well. This is not replacing them at all. This is additional stuff. This is goodness in, in conjunction with those. And in terms of that piece, then ultimately, this is what you get. So you get $5,000 worth of free of Azure. You get a boatload of other free licenses to help you develop in our cloud. And there's other bits and pieces you get in terms of helping you actually transact in our marketplace. So a full program there. Um, and what I would say to you is, you know, if you're a software company based in the UK, we'd love to hear from you. And if you want to apply for that program, please ping that alias ISV UK at Microsoft.com. That comes with the ISV team. What we'll do essentially then is, you know, is share with you the um, the application process. You apply yourselves. We don't apply for you. It's a short form that you fill in and away you go.